so today I'm going to be talking all about bloating and I want to talk more about what causes bloating because there's so many different reasons that you could have bloating going on in your body and honestly people just make it out to be way more simple than it is. People sometimes don't even really know what bloating is. They just think of it as, you know, belly sticking out or feeling really full and those are true but there's a couple different types of bloating and it's important to be able to distinguish between those different kinds so you can figure out what is probably causing it. So first and foremost, what is bloating? Bloating is the feeling of being too full of either air or of water or something really tight, more than just what you would typically feel from eating, right? And then there's also the definition that really involves the sticking out or the distension of your belly, right? So there's a appearance and there's also a sensation. So I want to talk about what causes gassy bloating. And then I also want to talk about what causes water retention bloating. And then I also want to talk about what causes the bloating that's really just more of the distension or even just having excess bulk inside of your belly. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump on in. So to begin, bloating that is more gaseous is going to feel a little bit more like, you know, bubbles erupting inside of you. Maybe there's going to be some flatulence involved with that. You might see some distension as well and just a little bit of indigestion. And what we're starting to realize now is that gas is actually something that's naturally produced in our bodies. There's supposed to be a specific amount, like around 100 to 200 cc's of gas in our gut at any one time. And of course that largely depends on our diet and what we're eating, but it also depends on how our body moves gas through our intestines, right? And so we can swallow gas, we can eat gas, it's called aerophagia. And we can also see that gas is produced by fermentation processes, which is when bacteria take the food that is not digestible or undigested by our, our gut, by our stomach and our intestines, they take those foods and they ferment them. They turn them into these different components that can largely be either gas or other micronutrients or even short chain fatty acids. And so when that gas is produced by the bacteria, it can accumulate and our bodies are meant to move that through and that's what causes flatulence. But sometimes that gas is either trapped or the motility is impaired and therefore the gas is not moving along. And so this is a lot of what happens when someone is experiencing bloating, especially right after they eat food or maybe a couple hours after they eat food. Now, a lot of this has to do with your digestion, right? And so if you're experiencing this kind of bloating, make sure that you are chewing your food thoroughly, right? Sometimes the stomach just can't do it all and it really needs you to chew as much as you can and to use your saliva to break down as much of those nutrients. Also, to make sure that you're not eating too much at once because sometimes people are in a rush, they take really big bites, they might chew it a little bit, then they swallow it and the stomach's like, what? <laughs> this is too much for me. And so it won't be able to digest it all and it'll move into the intestines and some of it will be fermented or trap gases and so therefore you will feel bloated. Now, another thing is eating late at night. Sometimes our digestive processes just aren't as efficient at night and therefore it won't be able to digest properly. And sometimes it'll also sit in your intestines longer, giving more time for those bacteria to ferment it and produce gases. So another possibility is that you are eating foods that are simply just difficult to digest. And there's a lot of different factors that could be involved there, like your genetics and whether you have the enzymes to break these foods down, whether these foods are prepared a certain way or even if they're grown a certain way, right? There's lots of different factors there. And so some examples would be lactose, where a lot of people just genetically don't have a lot of the enzyme lactase to break down lactose. And so when they eat it, they can have a lot of these types of symptoms. Also fructose is a really common one so that's another thing to check is if you know you're lactose intolerant, you're already avoiding dairy, but you're still getting bloated a lot, look into foods that are high in fructose. That might be something that's causing flatulence or gas or bloating for you. 
Another thing is beans. They're really high in this carbohydrate called raffinose, which is really difficult for a lot of people to digest, and that's why beans are well known for being a very gassy food. So you wouldn't want to eat too much at once, and you definitely don't want to overdo it you know, throughout the week. But people tend to experience gas when they eat beans because of this carbohydrate. And then another factor could be simply just having a high fiber diet, right? And eating too much fiber at once from all different sources. Sometimes our bacteria just aren't equipped with the ability to ferment those foods into short chain fatty acids and nutrients fast enough. And as a result, it turns more into gas. And so people feel bloated. So you'd wanna eat your fiber foods moderately and slowly. And of course, in relation to what you've been eating normally, you don't wanna go from a low fiber diet to a high fiber diet really fast. Um, and so another thing I wanna talk about is a family of carbohydrates that are called FODMAPs. And you might've heard of this before. It's largely associated with like IBS because for some reason, people that eat FODMAPs that have IBS have much more symptoms like pain and bloating and diarrhea, etc. And so there's a lot of different correlations between FODMAPs and gut health, but in particular to bloating, FODMAPs includes a group of carbohydrates that are just difficult to digest. It includes fructose, it includes polyols, sorbitol, it involves um, different types of fibers as well. So you might think of foods like onions and garlic or mushrooms. They have high amounts of these FODMAPs, and so this is another category that you would want to look into to see if maybe this is causing your bloating. Just a possibility. So another factor involved with bloating that could be caused by poor digestion would be digestive dysfunction. And so this is really just low stomach acid production where you're just not digesting your food in your stomach no matter how you're eating it, right? Or it could be poor pancreatic function where your pancreas, which is meant to release enzymes to help break down your food, isn't working properly. Or even your gallbladder, which is necessary to help emulsify fats and mix them into all the enzymes that help uh, digest them and absorb them into the body. So if these are not working, you know, it might not be really dependent on what you're eating or how you're eating it, but really, you know, just whether or not you're supporting your actual physiology. And so there's lots of things that could be happening that could break those types of organs and functions. It could be neurological, like people that have gastroparesis, it could be bacterial infection like H. pylori. It could be autoimmunity. There's lots of different factors that could affect these particular organs. Okay, so now I want to talk about bloating that is still a product of excess gas, but happens more in the small intestine. So this would actually be experienced typically around 30 minutes to upwards of two hours after a meal, okay? And so this could happen as a product of two primary things, and that is either going to be the gas is not moving through your small intestine properly, or excess gas is being produced in your small intestine by bacteria. And so when it comes to gas not moving through your intestines properly, this could be because of either not absorbing fats very well, because we've been able to see that fats don't allow gas to move very easily. They kind of keep it stuck, and so it can accumulate and if you have too much fat from eating too much fat or from not absorbing too much fat uh, or not absorbing enough fat rather, then you're going to see that that gas accumulates and it will feel like bloating. Now, other than fat malabsorption, this can also be caused by issues in motility caused by poor thyroid function like hypothyroid. It could also be caused by nerve damage, serotonin imbalances, lots of different factors that can involve the inability of the gut to move things along so things get stuck and gas gets trapped and therefore it feels like bloating. And then there's histamine intolerance, which could also be an issue, which is really you know common these days, believe it or not, and histamine, which is both produced in the body and consumed in the food, actually makes the vessels contract and can make the intestines smaller and as a result, trap the air even further and make it difficult for it to move along throughout the intestines. And as a result, you will feel that bloating. And bloating is actually one of the primary symptoms of histamine intolerance. 
Another factor is something called visceral hypersensitivity. And so this is really just where your nerves are more sensitive than they should be. So you might not even have excess gas, but you just feel it more than you really should. And this can be a product of multiple things like food sensitivities or um, hormone imbalances and things like that. Okay, so that is gaseous bloating. But now I wanna talk a little bit about the other types of bloating that can be caused by reasons that have nothing to do with gas. And so this is really gonna start primarily with constipation, right? And so when it comes to constipation, first and foremost, we gotta think about two major factors, and that is fiber intake and water intake, right? In order for our stool, the waste that our bodies did not wanna digest or absorb, uh, basically it needs to have plenty of fiber which attracts water to be able to create a bulky but soft consistency and so if you don't have enough fiber or you don't have enough water it's going to be either too dried out or it's not going to have the consistency that the body is going to be able to easily move through now there's also a lot of nutritional deficiencies like magnesium for example that can also be associated with constipation and so people often find some relief by supplementing with magnesium like magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide etc and then there's also some functional disorders like hypothyroid that can affect motility and slow things down and as a result people won't be able to move it through there could be neurological damage, there could be pelvic floor weakness. Um, sometimes we just see it in hormonal fluctuations like with menstrual cycles or with uh, pregnancy. And so, you know, we have to kind of investigate to figure out what's causing this excess bulk, right? But really you wanna think about first and foremost, could it be happening from my diet or from my hydration? So the next reason that someone could be experiencing bloating outside of constipation or gaseous issues could be water retention. And so this is something that I see a lot when people are experiencing a distension of their belly and they wanna have a flat belly, but for some reason it's not going anywhere. And that's sometimes because of excess adipose tissue or fat tissue, but it's also largely a result of excess water retention. And so let's dive into what causes that. So one of the primary causes of water retention in the body is inflammation. And this is when the immune system is responding to an infection or maybe a food sensitivity uh, or something else. And basically the immune cells release something called histamine. And the histamine is basically a chemical hormone that tells the cells lining your vessels to open up, right? Because that's how more immune cells will be able to enter to fight off whatever infection is in there. But when that happens, water can also flow out and as a result, fill up the spaces outside of those vessels and it can cause a lot of water retention, especially if it's chronic and that infection is ongoing or if the food sensitivities never stop coming or if the body is really struggling to drain that fluid throughout the lymphatic system. And so that could be a result of, you know, kidney or liver or, you know, circulatory issues. So what we want to think about first and foremost is, is there a primary cause of inflammation that's not being addressed, especially in the gut? And how can we begin to resolve that? Now, another possible cause of water retention could be from high estrogen levels, right? Whenever we see people go through dysfunctional menstrual cycles or pregnancy, or even sometimes taking hormone replacement therapies, uh, they will tend to hold on to more of their water weight. And so this can cause things to feel bloated or even to look bloated and distended. Now, another reason could be from having thyroid problems. The thyroid is largely responsible for helping fluid circulate and move throughout the body. And so if you have thyroid problems, this could also be a cause of water retention. Now, another potential cause of bloating could simply just be from your diet, just eating too much salt. Now, when we eat a lot of salt, we might see a little bit of puffiness or maybe feel a bit of bloating, but it shouldn't be too severe. There's usually something else going on that would cause a lot of you know water retention to the point of feeling bloated but if you do experience chronic bloating like that then you would really want to look into other possible severe causes things like diabetes or kidney failure 
you would definitely want to make sure that you ask your doctor to evaluate for those things just in case because that could be a very serious condition. Now, there's also a couple other conditions that could be associated with chronic bloating that you would want to be aware of. And they're very rare, but it could also be something to look into. And so that would be the possibility of having gallstones or gallbladder disease that can also cause the sensation of bloating. Um, and there's also some cancers that can be uh, associated with bloating or the sensation of bloating. And then also there's something called acidies, which is when you have a liver dysfunction and it can't get rid of or recycle the water that is accumulating in your abdomen. And as a result, your abdomen will slowly fill up with more and more water and it causes this distension called acidies. Now, other than that, there's really not much else that I have. There's the bloating that's caused by poor digestion. There's bloating that's caused by poor motility or bacterial overgrowth. And there's also bloating that can be caused by water retention, which is caused by inflammation or even hormonal imbalances. And so you would want to think about all of these different possibilities and maybe have your doctor check a little bit deeper into what could be going on. Now, if you are someone that's been experiencing bloating and having a really difficult time figuring out what's causing it or getting it to go away, then I encourage you to click the link below in the description where you can watch my free webinar all about how to create a personalized gut healing protocol. And of course, if that's something you want more support on, then please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I hope to hear from you soon and check out the rest of my videos if you're looking for more information on how to optimize your gut.